So if you're starting off with learning how to code, you might have heard this term testing or automated testing. And you have these different other terms like unit testing, integration testing, end to end testing. So what I want to talk about in this video is what is test driven development and does this actually help you? Like, will this help you as a beginner learn how to code? Now, the short answer is yes. I think this is really important to understand, not necessarily test driven development, but just testing in general. I think a lot of YouTube tutorials and Udemy courses and stuff will teach you how to, you know, code in React. They'll teach you how to make Express APIs, but they won't teach you how to test any of the things that you are writing. Now, when it comes to the real world, a majority of projects I've been on, actually all the projects I've been on, we've always had a lot of testing, right? And we typically have something called co-coverage, which verifies how much testing we have. So you can imagine when you have, I don't know, 3000 files of code and your code coverage is 95%, that means you probably have a lot of unit testing and integration testing, verifying that your code does what it's supposed to do. So what is testing in general? So testing is basically you write some code that verifies that your implementation works. So Jest is one library. Uh, you can go to jestjs.io, and this is one library that a lot of JavaScript people use to verify that their code does what it needs to do. Looking at this simple example, like let's say you wrote a sum function that needs to sum two numbers, right? So using a test, you can verify that if you pass one and two to your sum function, that the result is three. So the benefit to this is that I've many times when I've worked on small little projects as a beginner, I'd write some code, everything would work, I test it out of my UI, and then I start making some changes and I'd break my entire application. So if you have an actual test suite that you can run over your code, you can find out very quickly what did I break, how did it break, and I can revert those changes to kind of fix whatever I need to fix. All right, and you can imagine if you are on a team of 10, 30, 40, developers, it's very easy to make a single change in a file and maybe break functionality on a different page, right? So just keep that in mind. Testing is very important. In my opinion, there's some people who think testing is overkill or kind of a waste of time. But in my opinion, if you're going to write quality software, you need to have a large amount of tests to verify that your code does what it needs to do. Right, so let me just show you right here like what Jess does. This is a little TDD video tutorial I've been doing, but let me just show you what happens. I won't be showing you too much code so don't get so you won't get too bored. But basically you have a test file like this and when you run it, it basically runs through and runs all these test cases. And if your tests pass, it'll print out green checkbox and say like, hey, stuff is good. But if for whatever reason a coder came in and like modified something, like let's say they, I don't know, appended an S to something, you can rerun those tests and you'll get instant feedback that, hey, this file's broken now, right? And imagine if you have 2000 files, it's very easy to potentially break some business logic. So that is what the whole purpose of testing is. This is a unit test, but you can kind of do integration tests as well. There's something called end to end testing which is basically you have a library that loads up Chrome or a web browser and actually clicks on components on your website. And you can verify that certain things happen, such as if I click on this home button, I should get redirected to a home page. Or if I click on this guy's follow button over here, then that person should probably show up in my follow list on my profile. So you can test different things with end to end testing using this tool called Cypress. We use this a lot at work. And you can also use this for your test-driven development if you decide to do that. So I gave you an overview of what testing is. You have unit testing, you have end-to-end -end testing, you have integration testing. Um, if you wanna learn more about testing, I could probably do another video. But the point of this video is talking about test-driven development. So what exactly is that? Let's see if I can open this in a new tab. So let's kind of envision how you currently do programming, right? You probably load up your text editor, you start editing your files and you start implementing some new React components or you implement some new backend logic. And then you load up your Postman and you start hitting your backend or you load up your Chrome browser and start clicking around and make sure everything works fine. That's great. And when it does work fine, what you can do is you can add tests over your code to make sure that if in the future you change that code, you don't break, break functionality. Um, and that is, in my opinion, the traditional way that people do testing, right? They do the tests after they do the implementation. And that approach is actually great. I know a lot of TDD people say that approach is bad or it's a waste of time. It's it's really a great way to write tests. As long as your code is tested, I don't care if you write your tests first 
or after. It doesn't really matter in my opinion, just as long as your code is tested. And doing tests after you write your implementation really allows you to rapidly prototype and implement features that you might not have a good understanding of how they work. A lot of times I write my tests after the implementation, again, just because I need to find out more about the business use case I'm trying to implement and kind of prototype with it, make sure I understand it. And then if everything's good, I get that checked up by a PO and then I'll write tests to verify. All right, so test-driven development is kind of the opposite of what I mentioned. Test-driven development is you write your test cases first, you implement your test suite, or you implement your test file with some assumption that you kind of understand the code that you're about to implement, right? You might create a method signature, maybe a, a function name, and you already kind of know like what parameters you need to send in, but you don't actually start writing any of this implementation. This is kind of a small file. Let me, let me give you a better one. You don't actually write any of this implementation until your test is kind of fleshed out, right? You need to have some expect statements put in here. You need to have some logic kind of set up to verify that if in the future I do implement this function, it should do a certain thing. So that is what test-driven development is. Basically, you start with writing a failing test, which would mean that you write something like this. Um, and then you typically you need to run it just to make sure that it fails. So I just run this test. And if you pretend that I didn't even have any of this stuff implemented here, let's just say I had a function with an argument. So I should be able to run my test and you should see that it fails. So that's this red block. This is the first step of TDD. And then the second step is you make the test pass. So then I would go in and I would start trying to implement my logic. So in this case, I would just uncomment this. So let's just go ahead and run this. Now it passes, your test passes. That means that your function is good, your class is good, your module is good. And then the next step is to refactor. So now that you know that you have a test, you can go in here and you can change whatever you want. So if I wanted to, I could say like const random index is equal to this. And then I can just go ahead and paste this in here. And then I can run my test and I can verify that I didn't break anything. Because when you refactor code, there's a high chance that you break something. Let's say instead of uh, math.floor, you did math.seal or something. So if I ran this, this should hopefully break. And it did because I refactored my test wrong. So that's why we have these three steps to the TDD process. We write a failing test, we make the test pass, then we refactor our code. And that's really the all there is to it. I mean, you can look up blog posts and tutorials about TDD and they can like give you 5,000 words explaining how TDD is. And it's really not that difficult. You just literally follow this diagram and if you can follow this diagram, you're doing TDD, okay? So you might say, okay, this function is super simple. Like this isn't really a good example of TDD. Well, if you imagine that this function was like 50 lines of code or it had a bunch of if statements in it, what you do is you just continue adding more tests. So I make the first test pass and then I can come back in and add a yet another test um, does something else. And then I could start writing my test case out. And before I actually go and implement any functionality, I'd make sure that this test fails. I go in here and then I could start adding new logic. So like if random index is I don't know, less than zero, throw a new exception or whatever. And you can slowly start adding functionality and logic to your implementation by doing these additional, you know, test-driven development processes. So yeah, that's kind of all I wanted to talk about. Like if Testing and TDD is new to you. I definitely recommend that you check it out and see if it can help you. It does have a little bit of a learning curve, mainly because you need to understand how to write tests in the first place. You need to understand how to write like mocking and all this other stuff. So I think that's why a lot of people don't actually do it in their tutorial videos, but it's super important to learn and understand. And if you can go into an interview and kind of talk about, oh yeah, I know how to unit test. I know how to make my code coverage be 80%. I know how to do integration testing and Cypress testing, end-to-end -end testing and load testing and smoke testing and acceptance testing. And you just, you know, name drop all these things, but actually have a good understanding of what they are and why you use them. And I think you're going to look great as a potential person to hire because you actually understand one of the most important things to writing quality software, which is automated testing. Cool. So hopefully I gave a good overview and kind of detailed what TDD is for. You can go through all this and read the benefits and whatnot. It's just a bunch of, a lot of stuff you read online is just a bunch of fluff about it. Like you don't have to be a strict TDD developer. I like to do this. Um, I like to switch between TDD and just writing normal tests after my implementation. Again, really depending on 
the business logic I'm trying to implement. Sometimes you'll get a bug and you have to fix it. So you'll have to go through a bunch of files and maybe change just one or two lines. But before you change those lines, I would just go and update the test suite to you know include that new functionality or kind of change that functionality if business requirements have changed. If you enjoyed watching this video, give me a thumbs up. If you have used test-driven development or any type of testing um, as you're learning how to code as a beginner and it's helped you out, let me know. Leave a comment below. I'm interested in hearing your opinion on how testing is. I think it can kind of help hold your hand as you're writing implementation and help guide you as you're writing code. And like always, be sure to subscribe to this channel if you want to learn more about testing or just web development in general, because I should have a lot of videos like this that should hopefully help you become a better web developer in the future.